Just outside the capital, Kampala sits a slum called Kinawataka built alongside a railway line. Here, a small group of women making a living by picking used straws from among the garbage to weave mats, bags, and many other accessories. The founder of the group, Benedicta Nanyonga, says her retirement package from the central bank was not much, which prompted her to begin the initiative. And when I left 2001, there was no income for me apart from getting uh, assistance from my children. Sometimes they could give me some money, 200, 100,000. Sometimes they could say, Mommy, things are not easy. The straws are soaked in detergents and washed before being pressed to straighten them for the weaving process to begin. But this is problematic. The pressing process is done using a knife, causing a lot of pain to the women's fingers. It's also very slow and tedious, making it difficult to meet targets. Nanyonga bought a straw pressing machine from India with the help of the Uganda Export Promotion Board. But the machine was not effective and she now has a backlog of orders. I have another order from US, 10,000 shopping bags. I have another order from UK, 20 shopping bags. And then the local uh, business women, they want our, our product. But we don't have the capacity. Finding a suitable straw pressing machine has been a setback for the group of women. But Nanyonga has already trained over 700 women countrywide to help them come out of poverty, despite not having a machine to help them grow their market. She has won several awards too. But these are just a few of groups of ordinary Ugandans who are trying to make ends meet. Almost 70% of the people here depend on agriculture and live on less than a dollar a day. Experts say Uganda is seeing growth in telecoms, housing and banking, but that the government needs to invest more in projects like Nanyongas and those in the agriculture because foreign investors prefer less risk like the telecom sector. Now investment in this sector is good, but you need to have government where these private investments cannot reach. And the best example is agriculture. So if you have 70% with the population engaged in agriculture, but the, the funding for this sector is not commensurate with the people that are engaged in this sector, then you have a problem of growth with exclusion. A 2013 UN report has set 2030 as the deadline for world leaders to end extreme poverty. The report recommends halving poverty levels by 2030 by ensuring food security as well as access to clean water and sanitation. It also advises creating equitable growth by slowing deforestation and reducing food waste. Nuagaba says groups like Nanyongas and agricultural groups should have access to finance from cooperatives. Yeah, so if you have agricultural uh, insurance, agricultural financing through either agricultural development bank, like just we have in China, China has the fourth largest bank in the world. And how do they use these assets? Through listing uh, on a stock exchange. And people uh, are bought uh, shares, and this is the greatest financial deepening I've ever seen. Nuagaba welcomes the report but says while economies like Uganda are growing, individuals still cannot afford to put food on the table. Neither can they afford to take their children to school or even access clean drinking water. Nuagaba says governments need to look to those that are very poor and support initiatives like Nanyongas. Initiatives like these have helped hundreds of women in Uganda to become self-reliant. These women said they are capable of meeting both the local and international markets. But to achieve this, they say the government needs to fund the project. Isabel Nakiria, CCTV, Kampala.